Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video I am going to be explaining to you the aerodynamics of frame tube profiles. This was kind of inspired by a trip to the Canyon factory. If you're a regular viewer to the channel you'll know that a few weeks ago I went there and I saw a stand on the side of uh, one of their walls where they purported to, stay, to say that the Canyon Trident profile was more aerodynamic than a teardrop knacker profile, which is a load of bollocks. So this video will explain some of the aerodynamics around frame profiles. I will have another video where I explain some of the ancillary aerodynamics like um, shielded brakes, uh, internal cable routing and that sort of stuff. So for the purposes of this video, the ones that will be on test will be a circular profile, the Canyon Trident, the Trek KVF Camtail Virtual Foil, BMC Tripwire, and the Scott F01. And the Scott F01 is not really an aero profile, it's more designed to be lightweight, but I've just included it in here for comparison purposes. I really hate doing maths on YouTube videos because it makes people switch off, but for clarity and completeness, I'm going to explain one thing, which is called Reynolds number, and it's highly important and totally critical to anything aerodynamic. Reynolds number is this, RE equals rho, V, D, over mu. So Reynolds number is a non-dimensional number, it has no units, but it has a lot of importance in real-world aerodynamics, because when you get to a certain number, the flow characteristics change. What this means, sort of, in actual wordage, is the Reynolds number is a function of the density, the speed you're traveling at, how big the object is, and how viscous the fluid is that you're going through. So to kind of illustrate Reynolds number before we go any further, what I've done is I've drawn a beautiful drawing. Leonardo da Vinci would be proud. And there's two, two diagrams. So the top one is for laminar airflow, and that's where the Reynolds number is pretty low, so I've said one. So the air comes in from left to right, and it follows the circle, or the tube, quite well. When the Reynolds number gets high, what happens is the uh, air comes along and it can no longer follow the um, circle or the ball all the way around and it, it separates. So let's begin with the circular tubular profile and what happens is the flow develops and then all of a sudden you get to this point here where the cursor is and separation starts and that's because pressure feels are um, not even and you get all this vortex shedding. So let's move on to the next one which is the NACA profile and in this you can see the teardrop profile and you know, there's a bit of you know, turbulence generated here but overall the flow from left to right is pretty good. Uh, there's really no turbulence generated there whatsoever. If we go on to the next one which is the camtail profile so trek kvf um canyon trident bmc trip wire on the face of it it looks fairly good until i go and pause it here here you can see and if you look carefully as it runs the turbulence generates periodically and that's because a pressure field set up and then collapses and that causes rippling effect and rippling effect slows you down. Now let's look at the Scott F01. This one's just crap. I don't know who designed this but for an aero road bike it's not very good at all. Stiffness characteristic wise it is pretty good but it's not really much better than a circle. In fact I'd say it was worse. So uh, you know you can make a lightweight bike but for aerodynamic properties this is no good. Now we come on to the touchy subject of your angles and if you were to believe what these marketing people say that uh, camtail profiles or whatever the profile that they want is uh, better in you know, angles of your, um, it's a load of bollocks. So let's prove that. Let's start off with the camtail at 10 degrees of your. Uh, it's much more apparent now all of this turbulence that's being generated here. You can see this high frequency jitteriness um, and that's not good. And now let's compare that to a NACA profile, again at 10 degrees of your. You're probably thinking I've frozen the frame here, but I haven't. Um, it's just completely stable. Just to prove that, 
let me demonstrate with the resolution turned down a bit. So you can see it pulsing, but the NACA profile is extremely stable. Obviously you have to pick the correct NACA profile, I've picked 0024, but the principle is the same. So what I have done is I have calculated, hypothetically speaking, if you were to take a bike with standard geometry and then change the profiles from circular tubes to aerodynamic tubes, how much you would save. So I've normalized the graph. So if you look at the graph, what we have is we have the green line, which is a circular tube bike, standard construction, probably steel tubes, and that's always at zero. Across the bottom is the yaw angle and the power saving across the left hand side. Assuming we were doing 40 kilometers per hour, and that is pretty fast for a standard rider. At zero degrees yaw, so you're going straight on, a teardrop profile would save you 25 watts over a circular profile. And these three cam tail type profiles, so the Trek KVF, Canyon Trident, BMC tripwire, they're all at the same sort of level, um, sort of 17 watts. At three degrees, the you know the savings around 10, and then at six degrees, it's you know six watts. Thing to note is at every angle, apart from when you get to around about 11, a teardrop profile is more aerodynamic. The other thing I want to emphasize is how unrealistic this analogy is. If you study wind, wind, especially at ground level, does not come at a constant speed and on a constant angle. It tends to pulse and it tends to swirl around. So for the purposes of this and the you know, general guidance I would give, I would always consider what happens at six degrees as a better comparison between bikes. And the reason is, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the pulsing effect and then you've got also self-induced effects such as the bike rocking from side to side. And that also has an effect. The reason why the teardrop or the NACA profile is so effective is because is it's extremely stable at any angle. And that's the reason they use that in aircraft design because the lack of separation all the way up to 10 degrees is extremely predictable. The cam tail design, if bicycle designers could use the NACA profile and stay within the UCI guidelines of 3 to 1 ratio, they would. And that's the only reason why they don't. The belief that the cam tail is more aerodynamic is complete rubbish. It is not. Especially up to 11 degrees, it's, it's not even close. The vast majority of riding will be at an angle of probably about seven to well, plus or minus seven degrees. Beyond that, it's not even really worth considering because the difference between them all is zero. So there's one basic reason why a cam tail is not that aerodynamic and it is really around control. On a teardrop design, air is controlled all the way to the exit point. So the, the final point, which is over here, on a cam tail, air is controlled in the first sort of three quarters. When you get to this point, which is a critical point, you no longer have control and air can do whatever it likes. And it generally does. So air is controlled. At this point, you've got this huge vacuum or area of nothingness and air billows out. An analogy would be if you were to take your car up a hill. On the positive pressure side, as you go up the hill, you know, you're sticking to the road. As you come out over, you suddenly hit a cliff and then you go off the cliff and you tumble. On the teardrop, you get the car, go up the hill, go around and it gently takes you back to the bottom. I really hope you enjoyed that video. I guess it was there really to prove that, you know, there's a lot of marketing stuff out there and to make you understand you know, what the difference is. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button. Please check out my website, hambini.com, and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you, and until next time.